Okay, here's the problem solving video for problem 226. And if you'll note that um, this is a single loop circuit and it has a dependent source. So we're going to be utilizing the problem solving strategies on page 36 and 53. The one on 36 is for single loop circuits. The one on 53 is for circuits with dependent sources. And if we look at the problem solving strategy on page 36, it says to find a current I in the circuit. And I'm going to define a current I1, and I'm going to define it counterclockwise as shown on that diagram. So that completes step one. Step two says using Ohm's law, Define a voltage across each resistor in terms of the defined current. So now if we use Ohm's law, uh, that's going to tell us that the voltage across this resistor is going to have this polarity, and it's 8K times I1. The voltage across this resistor is 4K I1 with that polarity, and the voltage across this resistor is 8K I1 with that polarity. So we have those polarities uh, using Ohm's law. Step three of that problem solving strategy on page 36 says apply KVL to the single loop circuit. Okay, so now we're ready to apply KVL. And if we look at uh, step one of the problem solving strategy on page 53, it says when writing the KVL equation, treat the dependent source as though it were an independent source. So we're going to treat this as a, uh, an independent source for the time being, and then we'll take care of it. So let's start um, at that corner, as shown with the X, move around counterclockwise. So if we start, we'll have a voltage drop of 8K I1. Here we're, we have a voltage rise. We're going from the minus to the plus, so that's minus 18. Here we have a voltage drop that's 4K I1. And a voltage drop of 0.5 VX. We're not going to worry about VX yet. We'll take care of it in a moment. And if we come around, uh, we have another voltage drop, 8K I1 across that resistor on the bottom. And then one more voltage drop. So we have a plus 50 equal to zero. So there's our KVL equation. We've still treated that dependent source as just like an, an independent source for the time being. Uh, now let's simplify this equation. So we'll have 20KI1 plus 0.5VX is equal to minus 32. So there's our KVL equation. Okay, so this gives us a step two of the problem solving strategy on page 53. It says write the equation that specifies the relationship of the dependent source to the controlling parameter. And if we note that is uh, that element in the circuit. And if we look, Vx is equal to 8K times I1. There's a voltage from Ohm's law in terms of the current, which is 8K I1 with the polarity as shown. Notice Vx has the same polarity, so Vx is going to be 8Ki1. So now if we make that substitution, we'll have 20Ki1 plus 0.5 times 8Ki1 is equal to minus 32. And that gives us 24Ki1 equal to minus 32. And I1 then is minus four thirds of a milliamp. So current's negative, which basically means that I should have picked the current clockwise. We don't have to go back and rework the circuit though. We now interpret the answer and say, well, I1 is actually flowing in the opposite of the direction I assumed. So I assumed counterclockwise. We look at that answer. And that answer says, well, the current's really flowing in the other direction. So now we don't um, we don't have to go back and resolve the problem. We just interpret our answer. Like I said, I, I assume counterclockwise. 
a result saying, well, the current's really flowing clockwise. Now, uh, our problem says find V1. And we see V1 in the circuit. Now, we've got two possibilities. We can apply KVL around this loop, or we can go around this loop. Now, we can get the same answer either way. Okay. So I'm going to use this loop over on this side of the circuit. And if I do that, that tells me that V1 is equal to 4KI1 plus 0.5 VX. Okay. And uh, if we make a substitution, we have 4KI1 plus 0.5 Vx, which is 8k times I1, and that tells us that V1 is 8k times I1, so we have 8k times minus four thirds of a milliamp, and that gives us minus 32 over 3 volts.